Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Help me wrangle this crowd a little bit. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Lori. Jay Brell, go ahead, turn those cameras. Haley. Hi, Haley. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, Steve. All right. Broker Barry's also Chair Barry. Thank you so much, Barry. Appreciate the help. All right, everybody. Let's. We got a lot to cover and only a short amount of time to do it in. Tonight, so here are some upcoming events that I think you should all be aware of. Number one, lit. My personal favorite is the Made for More Mixer. This is happening tonight at Crawdads from 5 to 8. It is free. There will be hundreds of people, lenders, vendors, real estate agents, business owners. Come check it out. First drinks on me if you can find me. All right? <laughs> Might be high. Are you going to show up? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, you want a, if you want a cup of water, there's my wife. She'll get you some water. Yeah, Valerie, welcome to the water. All right, coming up next week is how to conduct a buyer workshop. Today we have the um, esteemed Ryan Lundquist. Give it up for Ryan Lundquist. Yay. Next week we have how to conduct a buyer workshop. It's going to be led by our very own Krista Proctor. The week following, Tom Daves will be in the house and he's going to be teaching on foreclosures and REOs. Wow. So these are the meetings coming up. And then also in July, don't forget in Granite Bay, we're going to have become a luxury specialist. Brent's flying in Michael Lafito. And um, this is going to be a meeting you don't want to miss. So here, there's a lot of events coming up. But before we get into Ryan's presentation here, I'd like to have today's meeting sponsor come up and share a few things. Sherry, you mind coming up and introducing yourself? All right, give her, yeah, give her a round of applause. Sherry Jones with Home Warranty of America. I'm your home warranty partner. Some of you have heard um, Peach, Plumbing, Electrical, Appliances, Cooling, and Heating. That's your foundation for a home warranty. Um, I'm here to offer a different home warranty experience uh, for your buyers just to be uh, a value advocate to help them through the home warranty process. So you can protect your your buyers for less than a dollar fifty a day. Dollar fifty a day, and you do pre you do listing uh, yes, coverage we as have well. Sellers coverage for thirty five dollars as well. Thirty five dollars, and what about rekeying? Absolutely, that's part of the. There you go. Right. So everything. <laughs> One something I want to I want to say, or actually, Val, you mind sharing a quick story about what? Because here's here's the thing. There's home warranty companies, and then there's the reps. Sherry's a phenomenal rep, and I just want to share with you a quick story that we had personally explain why we like working with Sherry of HWA. Yeah, just I had a, a buyer show up to the property the other day, and their air conditioner wasn't working. This was last week, and it was like 105 degrees. Um, and so anyway, Sherry just went above and beyond and tried to push for for getting that covered for them and you know worked on it for probably two whole days to try and make that happen for them so right. just really you know great to have her in your corner and making sure that you know it's not just a claim out there you know and with around, the rest yeah. of them yeah they yeah she can really help us out and be on our side yeah because they contacted yeah. corporate they weren't getting any help they reached yeah. out to you that's how you found about the issue yeah connected them connected to share with sherry and it got handled yeah. long story short all right so how can they get a hold of you sherry um 279 two, 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 all right, man, the room is filling up. Love it. This is what we this is what we like to see. All right. So we're going to get into the meat and potatoes here. Ryan has tons of information to go over. I'm going to share the screen, give him the keys to the kingdom here. And Mr. Ryan Lundquist, you're off to the race. Yeah, do you mind killing the lights, Barry? Yeah. Well, hey, good to see everybody. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, great to be here in person. And uh, we have so much to talk about. Has anyone noticed the market has changed lately? Yeah. <laughs> so um, there was a Facebook thread this week about some big talk with uh, CAR and NAR. And someone was saying, hey, how did it go? And then it was interesting to see in the comments because 
um, some of the agents were like, you know, we kind of felt like it was a beat down and some people left discouraged and feeling like maybe I need to go get another job. Right. And it's sort of like, you're on the cusp of like, should I start that dad bod only fans account? <laughs> real estate, you know? so, I'm figuring that out. You know? There's a market for everything. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So, um, but, but on a serious note, um, I think we're so used to positive, you know, hyper glowing stats in real estate. And then all of a sudden the market changes and it, I think, puts everyone, spins people out of control because then they think, what do I say? I'm so used to talking about this glorious honeymoon where everything's been just romantic and wonderful and hyped up and these stats are record breaking. Then all of a sudden, like, you're home. There are no servants bringing you Mai Tais at 9 a.m. This is like the real straight dope. The market has changed. And so this isn't a beatdown, but what I want to do is give you realistic perspective for what the market is doing. Okay, um, the pod, stats aren't positive or negative. I want you to leave here with a positive mindset, but I want you to leave here going like, oh, I really need to pay attention to a few things. So you guys ready to dive in? Yeah. Okay, cool. Anytime, ask questions. If we don't get through this, that's fine. Uh, Johnny has a PDF in my presentation. He can email me. I have some links that I'm going to suggest that you bookmark. And so uh, let's have a good time. But so here's kind of the market. You know, some buyers are feeling really hopeful. Um, there are some buyers who are thinking, I can actually afford the market. I can be out there and I have space. I don't have to give up my firstborn child. I can, um, I don't have to waive all contingencies. I might get in the little list. And so that's, I think, the positive news. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm messing you up there, Ryan. It's okay. It's okay. My computer is uh, yeah, I can't. Ha having a moment. Okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll just wait. No sweat. I think maybe you need to just X out of the um, the chat, unfortunately, because it's not allowing me. To yeah, my cursor. Oh man, we're totally crashing and burning. We're sitting out of the market, right? To have our narcos. I mean, we always need that. Um, and some people are just hungry for a housing crash. I don't know if you noticed. It's like social media conversations. Like, yes, we're going to have We're going to get destroyed every time I share some stats. There's always someone in the thread who's like, "We're going down," and I'm like. That's not what these stats show. Um, but in reality, you know, the temperature of the market is constantly changing. And it happens every single year. But what's different about this year is that it's happened about twice as fast. And so it's been really, really quick. It's been like honeymoon, glorious to all of a sudden, like I'm living in the slums. Like what happened? Okay. And so. Sorry, did I miss Yeah, whenever you touch it, I can't do that. I know. I'm trying to turn the camera on for you. Okay. You're up now. Okay. I'm just trying here. Anyway, here's some signs of a softening. You'll never forget me, Ryan. You'll never forget me. <laughs> There's signs of a softening market that happens every year. Okay, you know, fewer um, showings and fewer um, more price reductions. And there, there's all these things that happen. And right now, all of these things are happening in the market. You can check that out on the PDF later. But really, the X factor has been look at this massive rise in mortgage rates lately. Mm -hmm. So, has anyone noticed that? Yeah. 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 And so, it, you know, really, when, when you see, you know, buyers, you know, paying so much more for their monthly mortgage, <coughs> it's totally changed the market. But what I really thought the temperature can change by the week. I think sometimes people talk about the temperature like it's this locked in thing and it's really not okay and so what happens every week we need to change what we're saying about the market based on how stats go if mortgage rates went down to 5.5 percent buyers would be like woohoo if they went down to five percent that's like the new three percent that sounds like a deal right now right it's like gas at five dollars oh my gosh <laughs> and so um you know let's keep this in mind but when you look at redfin here's a look at you know in the beginning of the year um mortgages were below 1750 and there's just been this dramatic spike you know and so we're seeing 700 plus dollars and so no wonder why people are backing off remember the narrative though everyone was like nothing can slow down this market we will nothing can touch us and then all of a sudden mortgage rates, rates were like hold my beer right? <laughs> um, <laughs> affordability and 34 percent of households in sacramento county can afford the median price same thing in plaster county okay this is down from you know 2012 the worst moment in 2005 19 percent of households could afford the market now here's the thing this stat is based on the first quarter when we get the second quarter, like five to six percent rates, we're going to be down in the 20s somewhere. Okay. And so it's just a sign that fewer people can play the game. Okay. Um, mortgage applications, this is what we want to watch. Um, there's a link down here that I recommend watching because here's how the trend goes fewer purchase applications leads to fewer pending contracts, and that leads to less closing, fewer sales. Okay. Absolutely. 
Ryan, what do you see the timeline delay between the apps and pending and closing the days? Between the applications and pendings, I'm never on. I'm not on that end, so I'm not yeah. sure when applications and closing. I I have some cool days on market stuff, but um, but we'll see. But I was going to say here. Here's an interesting thing because the market changes, and we go, who are the buyers? Who are the sellers? And so we want to watch how are things changing. And this lineup here is second homes during the pandemic. You know, there were a lot of second homes that were being targeted, and what's happened? People aren't targeting second homes so much, right? Inflation and people's crypto portfolios are destroyed. And, and so you think about how does this change the market for deep Placer or deep El Dorado County? It can change demand. And you know, and you have buyers who might have more opportunities for people who do want to live in outlying areas. Okay. Um, but one thing that's been happening is we're actually seeing smaller homes sell. Okay, I know this graph looks crazy. It's like this EKG, and you're like, <laughs> please advance to the next slide. But oops. But during the pandemic, there is a spike. Here's the average home size from 2012. Look at this spike in size and the median size. I don't know if you can see that or not, but what's happening right here is that we're getting back down to a normal trend. And so people during the beginning of the pandemic, they were rushing to the market. And it wasn't like, hey, I want to quarantine and style with this big house. It was a lot of more money coming into the market. I can work from home <laughs> and I can buy a more expensive house. So that's beginning to subside, even before mortgage rates were really changing. And so it's just a clue that, okay, people might be focusing on smaller product. Okay, I'll be adding to this graph every week, but million dollar homes. Uh, here's Floyd Mayweather with his Lamborghinis and jet. But look at this 9.71% of sales so far this year have been above a million. Isn't that crazy? About 10%. Now, part of that though, it's not like, I mean, the luxury market has been thriving. I think it's beginning to, you know, the sizzle is slowing a little bit, but part of it's like prices have gone up so much. Have you talked to any buyers who are thinking like, this is a million dollars and it needs yeah. 50. And so I think that's a little deceptive because you're walking through, you're going, what? And so, you know, just brain of salt. But we were kind of going 140 miles per hour on the freeway. And then what happened is that the gas was let up and this car slowed way down. And now we're like going, we just want to get back to the speed limit and we might even be going lower. And so here's what I mean. Um, this lineup here is 2022 and 2021, and each and every year, this is January through December. And do you see the trend? Prices sort of go up for half the year, and then they kind of level off. They almost go horizontal. Do you guys see that? And so in 2021, look how it just broke away from the rest of the pack. And we've been up for like 15 to 20% from you know last year. You know, all the stats have been crazy. People are like, this market is nuts. But then you look earlier in the year, 17%. 11.6%. And so far, we need about one more week for these stats to be solid, but 6.5%. And so do you see what's happening? We're seeing price deceleration where price growth is not growing as much. And so that's the news you want to share with your sellers. Be like, hey, man, we're not in that 20% market anymore. Or here's a Sacramento County, similar dynamic. Okay, and then Placer County, this is a new Placer graph, yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Placer is about 7% so far. And again, the stats will be you know, more robust in uh, June. But what we're gonna see is for the rest of the year, in a normal year, this should go down and it should level off. And I think the verdict's still out on you know, what's gonna happen, because we need time to see the trend. And prices are so sacred in real estate and you know who they're not sacred for though is buyers. Like buyers, <laughs> well, I think we need prices to come down eventually so people can afford the market, right? Um, but this is my favorite analogy. Um, who has eaten hot pockets before? Yeah. Or you've seen Jim Gaffigan? Yeah. So, okay, the housing market's like a hot pocket taken out of the microwave a little too early. And if you've ever done that before, um, you know, you know, like some spots are frozen, some are like blazing hot, and it's like you're eating it going, oh, there's a chunk of ice. And here's the deal. The temperature isn't the same everywhere. Sometimes I share stats about the market and people are like, I don't see that at all, man. You know, I just got into contract, you know, 50,000 above asking there were, you know, a gazillion offers. And I go, that's wonderful. And these are little trees, examples of, you know, really aggressive situations. What I'm looking at, is the whole forest. There are really aggressive examples. Don't get me wrong. Let's not neglect looking at the forest. Does that make sense? Hot pockets. So, 
So how long is it taking to sell? What, what trend do you guys see here? Here's Sacramento County, June sales, 14 days. Now June sales got in the contract when? Probably in May. Mm -hmm. So they probably tell us more about the market in May. Pending since June, what do we notice? Taking longer, right? And what do we notice the average among listings? 35. And we see this in every county. And so as a sign, and now we should be seeing it take longer to sell at this time. That should be happening this year, but we're starting to see kind of a big spike. And here's what I mean. I'm going to show you SAC and then Flasher. So this line up here, or this line down here is so far in 2022, this black line. And you can see that there's been this big uptick. Now this is July. This is based on pending to June. And so, so far the statute could be like, look, it only took 14 days to sell in June. But when we look at pendings, we're like, oh, there's gonna be this big uptick. But look, this line up here is in a normal year, it takes less time to sell in the beginning of the year. And then around June or July, it takes longer to sell, okay? So here's the deal. In Sacramento County, 24 days to 39 days. From here on out, it should take in a normal year, 15 days longer to sell. And so if we do some simple math, by the end of the year, we will probably be at least at 34 days. Now, we've been at like 12 days for so long, the market's been hot, unless, look, unless if this keeps ticking up, we could be above, or we could, it's just to be determined, but we're out of that honeymoon market. Yeah, Dan? So, uh, I feel like days on market is being dramatically <laughs> affected by like the lender's ability to close the loans faster. So I think that there's, potentially a new norm for days on market, regardless of the speed of the market because of the speed of the transaction. It could be, the, the only thing though is the days on market gauges when a property goes active to when it gets into contract. If the lender- Oh, just a contract. Yeah, if the lender closes it quick, that's really after the stack. But that's a really good point though. Yeah. What, what is the time frame of the average? Time frame of average, you would see it in the fine print. It's 2016 to 2019 before the pandemic. Let's, uh, yeah. okay. let's not mess. Let's not mess with pandemic stats. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but here's how we look at it. Here's Sac County. Here's the average that red line. And look, we're seeing a dramatic uptick. And basically, in July, we're going to be back to 2017 levels. We're not back to normal levels yet. Okay, the market is still selling faster than usual. Here's a different way to look at it. The last two years right here, compared to all other previous years, look how insane we got, okay? And so we're so used to this market down here that it's like, what's the matter? We usually list on you know Thursday and then offers are due at 5 p.m. on Monday, right? We're not in that market anymore. You're going to need to convince your sellers that we might be on the market for multiple weeks. Eventually, we're gonna be on the market for the years up, 30, 40 days, okay? Um, most likely. Here's Placer County, and you see there's going to be an uptick in July, but Placer's weird. It, it's not going to be back to 2017 levels yet. Placer got way below the normal, and so um, unlike Sacramento County. Um, here's a look at um, what's normal for Placer, and look at this time of year, 33 days to about 51, and so what is that, 18 days? And so really by the end of the year, if we have a normal market, we will be up to 40 days by the end of the year. However, if this trajectory continues, we could be more. Does that, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we want to look at it, just plan ahead and be like, oh yeah, it's not that 12 days on the market, even though people are going to be like, but I got bid on 50,000. Okay, these are trees. Let's look at the whole forest. Yes, were you saying? No, you, you covered it. No. Okay, cool, cool. Um, here's plaster. Like I said, it hasn't caught up yet to any other previous year. It's still, there's still a really aggressive zone. I know the market doesn't feel aggressive, right? I, I get that. So the stats will catch up. Um, so sellers finally negotiated a bit more with buyers. This is a good thing. This is good, positive news. And then buyers are like, no, I, I won't win. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so here's some stats that have not been put out there. I'm excited for you guys to hear them because I think that there's going to be some compelling stuff to talk about. This is kind of nerdy, but I think it's really, really powerful. Now, okay, these are preliminary stats. We need about one more week for these stats to be solid. But um, on average, this in June, when you look at sales, properties sold 1.1% below the asking price. Now, this is actually normal for June. When you look at normal Junes, look, this actually looks normal. You yeah. know what was not normal last year? 4% above the asking price on average. 
And so, but look at this really sharp decline over the past month. The market went from like, oh, it's on steroids in May, property sold two and a half percent above the asking price, and all of a sudden, whoo, right? And so we're beginning to see the effects the mortgage rates have had. Now, um, it, it's important, uh, this, this stack can change in, in coming time, but what we wanna do is we wanna get away from this crazy market. For 17 months in a row, we sold above the, uh, above the list price on average. That shouldn't be happening, okay? And so, like I said, honeymoon's over, and hopefully we'll find some normalcy. Okay? You you got that labeled original list price, but then you're using the term asking price. Uh, uh, is it original original list, list or original list price. That's the only metric okay. that matters, as far as I'm concerned. I don't want to dabble in list price. That's weak stuff. That's to manipulate stats and be like, I'm awesome. Nope, nope, we don't need any of that. You guys know what I'm talking about. Here's a different way to look at it. On average, properties this month, so far in the stats, they sold $7,500 below the original list price, okay? <laughs> and you can see that's on par with a normal June. It's way different than last year where property sold about 26,000 above. What a different market, but here, we don't wanna be in a market that's unhealthy like that, okay? Um, buy buyers own 361 properties. Uh, Redfin owns 41, Zillow 16. Zillow used to own 500 plus homes in November, okay? Uh, Open door 338, offer pad technically three, but they have, all, they have about 77 in escrow right now, according to one of their reps. Here's the startling part. I, and this is cool. No one else puts out stats like this. Either I'm a nerd or you don't like this, but um, <laughs> Redfin, 58% of their stuff is listed. What they own, 58% of their, their properties are listed. They're active or pending. Zillow, I mean, they hardly have any, but look at Open Door. 75% of what they own is on the market, either listed for sale or pending. And they have a lot of price reductions, usually more than the market. Is sort of their strategy, but I've noticed that they're actually starting to use different agents also um, from other brokerages to list some of their stuff. So they are a machine trying to continue to gain ground in the market. Okay, not scaring you, not giving gloom. They, I buyers are about five percent or less of total volume in the market. Okay, if that freaks you out. Focus on the ninety-five percent. <laughs> um, so. We had less than one month of housing supply for 22 months in a row. Thank you for letting me use this Instagram photo. So you know that. Um, we had for 22 months in a row, but guess what? The honeymoon ended, we're back from Cabo. And you can see here was monthly housing supply. Mortgage rates went below 3% right here. And for 22 months straight, we had less than one month of supply. This has been totally nuts. And look at this spike. It's been really dramatic. Okay, now let me ask you, where are these listings coming from? Why are we seeing this spike? Oh, people fear of missing out on the top of the market. Okay, that could be some the people. Are are coming. Okay, no, that's not some not as many. Thank you. Okay. Okay, these things very true. Less buyer activity. We are getting more listings because we're seeing fewer buyers. It's not that so many listings are hitting the market, it's that we're actually seeing fewer pendings. And so you have two piles. You have your pendings and you have your actives. Guess what? Then there's fewer pendings and then actives start to build and build and build. And so that's why we've seen this spike. It's not because all of a sudden we have all these homes, but it feels like it because I log on to MLS in the, in the four county region, 3,600 listings today. Now what's normal? We could have about a thousand more, okay? But you know, a few months ago, it was like 1,700. And so it's really changed the market. But you know, when we when we back up, here's a look from 2009 onward, and here's where we are right here. And so this has been a dramatic spike. Sometimes people are like, you know, like yesterday, someone said on one of my socials, he's like, laugh out loud. Um, we we have this is such a depressed level of inventory. We can get up. We need to get up to five to six months. And I said, hold my beer. No, I said, <laughs> I said, no, that's actually not true. Our market would be declining probably about three months, okay? And so let's not sensationalize this. We are actually still low, but here's sort of where like our normal territory right here, we're kind of getting into the normal zone, right? Dan? You, you, you typically run your temperature on open house activity. What's your feedback been like that all night? I mean, that's, that's a great lead indicator, right? How much traffic are your open houses getting? Yeah, definitely. This weekend's gonna suck because it's a holiday weekend. Yeah. Yeah. 
for sure less traffic. I think you could look at showing time stats. We could pull the rim and people are like, sometimes like people are like, yeah, it's crickets. Um, nobody came. My mom showed up, you know, to be nice. You know? So, but it, the feedback is mixed. Sometimes like all you need is that one bar and that's the thing. We're not in that market. Um, Keep on time. But anyway, so here's this like super colorful visual. You can unpack that later, but this is actually a really powerful visual. This is from John Burns Real Estate Consulting. And here's Sacramento right here. And they would say that inventory is at this dot. Inventory is actually right over here in this <coughs> dot. Okay. But down here, they say that it's healthy price appreciation, basically under 1.5 months in Sacramento. Okay, and then this color right here, my wife says I'm colorblind. That looks like a brownish kind of color. Is that what that is? Beige. beige. Okay, we'll say beige. And then they say mix between 1.5 and 3.2 house, uh, 3.2 months of supply. They would say is a mixed bag. And I think that's really true because you're going to list and be like, okay, inventory is not that high, but at the same time, wow, it feels like buyers really have a lot of power right now. Okay, but you can see in Sacramento around 3.2 months, they would say depreciating unhealthy, you know, but look, different markets across the country, like Orlando doesn't decline until six months. Like markets are kind of like people. They're, you know, they're not the same, but in our market, we don't want to perpetuate the myth about five months. It's not true here, okay? It's so, impossible for Quebec, it's impossible for Charlotte to be unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, that was that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always healthy, no matter what. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to skip this next slide. Um, so, here, real quick, there's a new listings in blue in the region. More new listings during the beginning of the year, fewer listings during the second half, more, less, more, less. What do you notice since the pandemic happened, though, about the number of listings? We're missing a lot of listings that aren't coming to the market. Okay, there's a lot of reasons for that, but um, it's been a thing. Um, now, what we see, there's this link right here. I want you to later to download that link. Keep it on your desktop because it's a really cool link where by the week you can look at stats and you can see what is the market doing or Google Redfin Data Center. It's a very, very powerful link. You can search by county. You can search by the Sacramento metro area. You can search you know, Fresno or wherever you have questions about real estate. Now, the number of new listings, look, in black in 2022 compared to orange in 2021, looks very normal, okay? Um, but what we're starting to see is the number of listings actually on the market is breaking away from the pack last year, okay? I'll let you unpack that last year. It's just kind of like the two piles, okay? We're actually not seeing an abnormal amount of listings, but we have so many freaking more listings because buyers have stepped off the gas, okay? Well, yeah, we've taken the last couple of years of getting used to so little amount of uh, inventory, right? There's been more listings, right? But there's still the amount of buyers was so much greater. True, yeah. So yeah, and some, you know, we had a big year last year. So some buyers who, like, they've already bought. Okay, some people are like, I'm locked in below 3%. I'm not moving up, right? <laughs> um, that's how I feel, right? Yeah. But look at pendings. Oops. Uh, pendings are beginning to dip. And so you can see um, at, at the beginning of April, this black line has gone down, and here's 2021. And so there's been demand that's been sinking, okay? And sometimes people in real estate are like, I rebuke that, you know, don't tell me about, you know, bad news. And I'm like, no, this is real news that we need to ingest, okay? And, and let and it can help us form decisions. But at first we were like, you know, it was Easter, man. You know, that's why it was, so but no, no. Demand has shrunk. Buyers are, it's just, it's just hard to afford. Here's a uh, pending contracts in black in the region. They've been dipping by the month. Uh, when I add June, June will be, you know, more horizontal here. The good news is it won't, you know, go all the way down. Um, Placer County looks very similar, and you can see it's it's just been a low year. Okay, that that's just those are market facts. Okay, um, but the formula is new listings plus fewer pendings equals a softer trend. Okay, if you're making math in the market, this is the formula you want to listen to. Okay? Um, but has anyone noticed price reductions increasing? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you haven't, like, let's talk afterwards, you know? <laughs> so we're, we're starting to push up in the region. I, I, first of all, forget the 24 hour market watch in MLS. 
put it to seven days and you could set it for multiple counties. Like I set it for the whole region and we're pushing 600 plus right now, but it's it just, it's slowly ticking up. And I think the narrative is like, we are crashing, what's happening? So let me give you some perspective and maybe um, some things to think about, okay? Um, so first of all, here's kind of what it looks like right now. Um, sellers are just really eyeing that unrealistic price. They're distracted and then buyers are like, hey man, we are not buying that thing. Okay. Um, basically, you can overprice at any range. This is what this graphic shows, you know, zero dollars to a million. And these are price reductions over the past week, even under 300, 400,000. Like it's not just at one price range. No one is immune from the trend. Okay. But everyone wants a Bay Area unicorn, right? And it's like sellers are like, but, but my property's so special and we're going to have this Bay Area buyer. Then I'm like, oh, you mean that Bay Area buyer that works at a tech firm that might be laid off and they, they lost 50% of their stock portfolio? That buyer? Oh, yeah, they're going to overpay at our feet, right? <laughs> so be careful about that. Um, now, here's a cool visual, though. Are you guys still with me? Okay. So uh, this shows how, like, how much our price is being reduced. Okay, and I'm pushing these out every week, and I have this for Placer, Yolo, El Dorado, Sacramento County. But here's how you read this visual. I want you to understand this. Um, so basically, five percent of reductions have been reduced between one and five thousand dollars, or about thirty percent of reductions have been reduced five to ten thousand or 27%, 10 to 25,000. And so you see, just kind of know what's going on out there. Now, there's no, like, you know, you know, someone asked me this morning by text, how much should I reduce the price? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> Look at the listings in the neighborhood. Look, what is moving, okay? Um, so here's a different way to look at it. I'll let you unpack that later. But what is this number right here represent? Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Um, can I get that? Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> what, what is this number right here? Does anyone know? What does it represent? 29% of the amount of uh, first time buyers. Yeah, first time buyers, transactions. Okay, this is of current pendings that have had a price reduction. Okay, it's proof that reductions work to get you into contracts. Okay, and here's a different visual, the same thing. This one tracks um, how much was the price reduced before getting into contracts. Okay, and you can see that only 4% of reductions between one to 5,000 got you into contracts. And so that seller's like, I know we're priced at 650,000, let's go 645,000. You go, and then show them a vision like this and go, well, maybe not, right? And, and, and so just something to keep in mind. Um, and days on market, how long are, yeah, let me skip through some of this. I'll say on average pendings over the past two weeks, they've spent 20 days on market and half of properties that have gotten a contract about two weeks, okay? Most price reductions are occurring not in the first week. Look at this, 2% of reductions in the first week, okay? 12% during the second week. You know, it's really starts to tick up after the third week. Yes. Brian, when, um, when you were talking about the last time with the price reduction, are you getting that from, let's say, like original price to um, like closed or, or, uh, or price oh, reduction, oh, just like an okay, price? original price to whatever it got, like the list price in MLS. That's so all like, we know. We don't know the price. closed price yet. So it could be that they also accepted lower. Of course, of course. Or not. Okay. Yeah. And so we don't know for sure, but that's why I gauge like, I'll look at sales, the, the reduction, but here, but all we know, it got in the contract when the price was reduced. So, but yeah, it, it's absolutely a viable point there. Um, I'd say expect for buyers to be more sensitive about condition and location, right? All of a sudden, you guys saw this viral house a few months, like last month. Okay, that property that's on a four-lane street, it's going to stand out more, okay? And the property that backs commercial, the property that smells like, you know, 20 cats live there, like, it starts to become a bigger issue. So take condition and location and give it serious thought. You know, it's minus $5,000 and it, it, it's like, you know, needs a hundred thousand work, like really find those fixer comps. Okay. Um, but I'd say, yeah, inflation is a big deal. Um, is anyone cutting back expenses? Yeah. Maybe, or just my family. Yeah. Uh, we had to sit down with my teenagers uh, last month and we were like, guys, stop making so many sushi runs on my dime to Rayleigh's. Okay. Like, and, and so we kind of cut back in little ways, whether it's Starbucks or frivolous spending, not because I can't afford it, but because, 
I'm smart, okay? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to waste my money in an inflationary environment. So um, top agents aren't gonna have, you know, come out with their like, my plan to beat inflation by not buying lattes. Like, you don't wanna pitch that out there, but like, there's a real yeah. sense where we're looking going, how can I cut through those expenses right now? Okay, price stops and plaster, look, they're about 40%, that's higher than 2019. So right now we're kind of flirting with this level that's, it's getting out there, but it's not like this danger zone. It's like, hi, mm -hmm. it's not a danger zone. And so just be careful, but if this keeps increasing exponentially, then we'll revisit that and go, oh, we're having a real issue. The good news, sellers are gonna catch up. This line will go down eventually. Okay, right now they're behind the ball. They're still like, you know, living in the past in January thinking, oh, the market is hot. You know, they've got nothing but hot headlines for two years. And, you know, so just wait for headlines soon. Price drops in Sacramento County, similar thing. Um, it just takes one buyer though, right? You know, <laughs> until he backs out and doesn't buy Twitter, right? <laughs> but that's the thing. Aim for the one buyer, not the unicorn, but the realistic buyer. If you get lucky, fantastic, okay? Um, but I'd say stop focusing on prices. Okay, this is actually a really good point. Um, am I here with you? It's kind of a quiet room. Okay, we got 15 more minutes. Okay, so here's what I want to say. In 2005, the housing market began to change. Okay, the bubble burst. In over one year, do you know how much prices declined in one year? 34%. Okay, actually, the, fir the first year, 4 to 6%. That's it. And so you could have looked at prices and been like, oh, no big deal. Like, and so the analogy then that was put out by NAR, the um, you know, the president at the time was like, oh, it's a slow leaking balloon. And you know, but then it totally get destroyed. So it ended up not being a great analogy. <laughs> but um, but if you looked at prices only, you'd think no big deal. And so I want to talk you off the ledge of focusing on too much prices because at the same time, look what was going on. Prices dipped by four to six percent, but look at volume. Volume dipped by over 40 percent in one year. In Sacramento County, you were missing about 900 sales that would have normally happened in a year. So volume fell off a cliff, even though prices weren't changing that much. And so people are always like, what are prices doing? What are prices doing? I'm more focused on what's happening with volume and pending contracts. And at the same time, inventory really began to increase 2.6 months to eight months. Whoa, eight months, imagine that. And so I just wanted to remind us that like, it's not all about prices. I know it is to sellers and you know, everything, but let's be more infatuated with what's happening with volume and pending. That's why I'm reporting it by, by the month and using Redfin by the week, all that stuff, okay? Um, but the cheese is old and moldy. Has you, have you seen it in Sino Man? It's a great flick. My son just graduated high school. I was like, missed opportunity. I should have shown him this. But um, here's the deal. And sorry if you don't get that analogy. You weren't born yet. That's okay. It's a good movie. It's held up. But sales are old and moldy. Sales tell us what the market used to be like when they got into contract. And so something closes today. They got into contract in May. And my goal here is let me look at all the sales, but let me look and say, what is happening with the listings and the pendings? If the pendings are all down here and sales are up here, then I go, this is where we need to price. The market has changed. The market has declined or whatever it is. If the pendings are up here and the sales are, okay, the market is increasing in this neighborhood, okay? Sales are crusty though. So let's be careful there. Uh, multiple offers speaking up. Uh, over the past two weeks, 41% of properties in the region have had multiple offers. These are pendings. This is like as fresh as you can get with data, okay? That number is no longer 70% during our honeymoon, okay? We're home from calls, okay? Um, in Sacramento County, 44.8%. And how many in Placer? The next slide. Any guesses? Is it going to be higher or lower than Sacramento oh, County? Higher. higher. No. Remember, <laughs> Placer County prices are higher. Homes are larger. And so Placer, actually, 36%. And so all of a sudden, it's like, this is good news for buyers. Now, if all you're infatuated with is sellers and like you're freaking out with this, okay? This is great news for buyers. Who knows what this is? It happened in 2021 in California. We had this many people leave the state, okay? Okay, and I'm gonna zip through some of this, but I wanna show you that uh, Sacramento lost 0.1% population. Um, Look at Roseville. Roseville gained 2,200 people. Roseville was number six on the list of you know, smaller cities um, with the largest numeric change. And so 
as you think about the market and where people are moving, position yourself for success. What are the areas that are growing? What areas are contracting? And when you look at, um, here's a, a Placer County, Lincoln, you know, grew by 1.6%, Roseville, 1.5%, um, and, and so on. And kind of know where are people going? And, you know, we have Sacramento County where Folsom, you know, experienced change, Ranch Cordova. And so pay attention to the demographic stuff. Okay, those are clues into the future, all right, for how to position your business. This line up here, people leaving California, you big uptick these last two years. And these, this line down here, people um, coming to California. Believe it or not, people do come to the state. We've seen a dip these past two years, okay? And so what we want to do, hopefully this will get back up where it was, okay? But, you know, who is going to leave the state? Like, don't make your whole business about that, but who has incentive to buy, sell, rent, invest right now? Who's going to deploy their California pension or their equity here, and they're going to move to Idaho like half my Facebook feed, or like my parents moved <laughs> to Idaho, right? I'm bitter over that. But identify these people. This is viable business. This will continue to happen. Okay. Um, affordability issues. Um, I don't know who this is, but yeah. <laughs> so real quick, I wanted to share. Um, here's uh, actually. Uh, let me go back. Here's Sacramento County in May. These were the number of sales in May, and I lined it up over 20 years. What do you notice about this past year or this past May compared to other years? It was one of the lowest, besides when the market was tanking and besides the pandemic. Mm. Here's Placer County. This is a brand new visual. If you guys dig it, I'll keep making this each month. But you can see Placer's a little different, a little bit more robust. It was down from some previous years, yeah. but definitely, you know, more growth. And part of that is like in the early years, there's just been so much more new construction. Okay. Um, June's going to be down. Okay. But in Placer last month, in May, you know, there were almost 100 fewer buyers or deals happening compared to the previous month. And so it's kind of like the, you know, you're looking at that as an agent going, okay, how can I excel? Okay. Um, so, but here's, here's the deal. And then we'll kind of go into our closing stuff. I'd say the reality, we're poised to see fewer sales ahead as buyers struggle before the market, higher rates. My advice, okay, and put this on your desktop, work harder than ever before. Expect to see fewer deals on your desk because you're being realistic. Cut frivolous expenses, beef up your marketing and service, and focus on the deals that are happening rather than the ones that aren't. Mm -hmm. Again, we can say that pendings will be down in, in June by probably 20 to 22% or so. Okay, you can focus on that, or you can focus in your mindset and go, I'm looking at all the stats, about 80% of the market is still happening. Okay, how can you thrive in that 80%? I think that's the deal. Okay, but unexpected things happen. Did anyone predict Pete and Kim? <laughs> no, the answer is no. Nobody saw this. No one understands it. We're like, what? Oh, this guy's a magnet, you know? But anyway, nobody knows the future. Everyone and their mom has predictions about the economy and real estate and crypto. And like, like how many people said cryptocurrency was going to be worth 19000 Oh, yeah, crickets, nobody, right? But, you know, I check and go, oh, I'm glad I don't own too much because, you know, my, I'm cut in half. <laughs> and so nobody predicted that. Nobody knows if mom jeans are going to be popular next year, right? And so <laughs> what we want to do is employ humility, okay? Now, here's the last few thoughts about the market. Can, if I still have you here, I want to talk about price cycles, okay? Markets go up and down. And, uh, so here's this green line. This is a Freddie Mac price index in Sacramento <laughs> since 1975. That's the green line. Now I adjust it for inflation and I get this line. I like the inflation adjusted line because it creates a more pronounced up and down. And so let's look at that line. So what do you notice? The market goes up and then it goes down, up, down. Our narrative in real estate is like, it's gone up forever. The only time it ever went down was in 2005. And I'm like, Oh, you haven't read history. How sweet is that, precious? And so <laughs> markets go up and down. That's that's the truth. Now, Dave Ramsey is like, hey, you know, we got five years of market appreciation. If, is Dave correct? I don't think so. Um, but at some point, someone's going to be correct. They're going to be heralded as a prophet. We'll give a parade in their honor. But the reality is... The goal is to focus on who has incentive to buy, sell, invest right now, regardless of what prices are doing. But here's the thing, a, a, few, a few quick things. Nobody knows the future. Uh, right now, I would say it's incorrect to say that the market is crashing. I would say 100%. Wow, the market has really changed. And let's watch, watch it by the week. 
Okay, um, but be aware of rhythms up and down, um, but I'd say that 2005 isn't the new template. A lot of times people look here and guess what they think? They're like, that's about ready to happen right now. We're gonna go down 50%, but think about it this way. In the 1990s, we went down by about 15 to 20% here. And then by 2002, people could have been like, bro, we're about ready to implode because markets, you know what markets do? They go down by 15 to 20%. But then we went up three more years and then we went down by 50. And so history shows us not all markets are the same. I have multiple kids. I have one son that just graduated high school. I have one son that's a junior now. If I said to my junior son, Thomas, you know what the next two, two years are gonna look like? Um, I'll tell you because your older brother Noah has been there before. And he would look at me and go, dad, what are you talking about? We have similar DNA. We've grown up in the same household, but..." We're not the same person. We're not going to unfold the same way. And the same thing is true. Just like children, housing markets are not the same. So don't expect for a correction to be just the same as it was the last time. If that happens, then so be it. But I think it's a mistake to look back and go, it's, it's automatic. Um, but here's the thing. I would say, how long do you want to rent? Some people are like, I'm going to sell my house. Look for those people who are worried about the bubble. Okay, don't perpetuate fear, but look for people who want to sell. But here's the thing. Um, someone last year said, I'm going to sell and I'm going to rent. And I go, you know, normally when the market declines, we decline about six years. So how long are you going to rent for? Okay. It's an honest question. Um, and the last one I would say is, where do you want to be? I love when Mike Gobi, um, if you know Mike, he's um, a real estate broker in the area. And I, I love what he says. If someone senses that the top is near, where do you want to ride down the market? Right. What does your lifestyle mandate? Where do you want to be in life? What are your goals? What school district do you need to get your kids into? There's people who are moving up. There's people who are moving down. There's people who are moving out of state. There's people who are deploying equity from the Bay Area to Sacramento. There's people who are moving properties from Sacramento to Texas like Elon Musk. Like there's, what are the opportunities in this market? The more, this market is terrible for first time buyers trying to afford under 400,000, but that doesn't mean it's terrible for everyone. And so find the people who have incentive to move because their lifestyle mandates it. Okay, the, I'd say forbearance, less than 1% of the market. Um, mortgage delinquency shot way up during the pandemic. They're now one, less than 1% of the market. And so sometimes people are like, the ticking time bombs here. Everyone's going delinquent. The stats don't show that, okay? Um, no, if it changes, then I'll change my tune, okay? Um, now, the last thing I would say, can I have you real quick for just some closing unsolicited advice? Absolutely, okay. yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I promise we'll go quick. So I'd say this, we need time to see the trend. Okay, be careful about your YouTube watching habits. Okay, there's so many profits out there. Stay grounded in the numbers. Okay, um, I'd say uh, know what normal stats look like so you can spot it normal. Or you can say that, okay, the market's doing something else or we're not back to normal levels yet in mostly every regard. Okay. Um, identify who has incentive to buy, sell, rent, and invest in today's market. That's like the number one thing I would be talking about with everyone every single day. When you see sales happening, look, who are the buyers? Are they investors? Are they first-time buyers? Are they wealthy individuals relocating? Okay. Um, recognize the trend isn't the same in every price range. It feels uneven, like my Hot Pockets analogy. Um, oops, I'd say help, uh, help sellers. Oops, help sellers see the temperature change and price according to pendings. Talk sellers, that we see the market in the pendings. Bitcoin was worth 40000 a few months ago. I can't fixate on that. What is it worth right now? I look to today. Same thing in real estate, okay? Um, so I'd say uh, stop watching stats like crypto. Take your mental health seriously, okay? If you're obsessing over the market every day, seriously, turn off your freaking phone, stop doom scrolling, okay? I tell people I'm 45 years old. If I'm lucky enough to live 30 more years, do you know what's going to happen? We'll probably have two more up and down market cycles. Am I going to be checking my Zestimate every single day? And am I going to be crunching stats and freaking out? Am I going to only feel good in life when the market's going up? I got a problem then. <laughs> only, only your crypto account doesn't come. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. Let's talk about that later. Um, expect buyers to be more sensitive. We talked about that. Um, don't get swept up in new, every new sensational article or narrative. Okay, please don't. Focus on the deals that are happening instead of the ones that aren't. I'd say don't be that colleague who repackages market prophecies every year. I can't stand that when I'm, see, I've been prophesying this. And I'm like, yeah, you, you did not prophesy that rates would double. Rates doubled and that's what's changed the market. Not your prophecy, bro. 
Um, experiment with list price to find a current market. I'd say watch fire insurance areas really closely. What's the sentiment as affordability becomes an issue? Is that going to affect where buyers are migrating? Okay, watch my stats, um, please. I put out one weekly post. I'd say bookmark some of the links when you get this PDF. Bookmark the Alta stuff and the Redfin stuff. Um, expect to work hard because some clients are going to back off their market. You don't talk anyone into this market. You don't want to manipulate anyone into business. Find the people who are, their lifestyle is colliding with this market today. And, you know, fantastic. Uh, a few more things. Don't be afraid to change what you say about the market from week to week. Okay? If we don't change what you say, we're probably not paying attention. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the last two things, don't be afraid to make more significant price reductions if needed. Okay. If the market's not buying, that's okay. You don't want to be that one percenter who's like minus $4,000. Like if that's not going to get it done, you know, talk to your sellers. And the last thing I'd say, I always end with this in my presentations, um, I'd say be generous and authentic because people want to work with good people who have their best interests at heart. That's what life is about. Um, and we don't want to be those slimy salespeople. We want to be the people who just serve like, like no other. Okay, that's who I want to do business and life with. And I think that's what the market's uh, looking for. That's me. Um, that's on, on my socials. Um, there's my blog. Um, I'm, I'm like working overtime on stats, pushing stuff out every day for you. Please use that stuff to be successful if possible. If you don't like that stuff, that's okay. Then don't use it. Some other dude or dude will, will share stuff that you do like. But um, anyway, that's me. That was my spiel. I hope that was helpful. Yeah. Um, thanks for working with us. Turn the lights right, back up there. All right, Ryan. All right. Quick question. Wait, wait, before before we ask Ryan a question, yeah. I want to say you see you see his information up here. You're probably if you're not already subscribed, you're probably going to repost this stuff. Make sure you give credit where credit's due and tag yeah. Ryan in those posts yeah. so they know that he's the one that's pushing this out. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, how do you recommend the best way we do comps currently with the market the way it is? I mean, we can't really go by past. So and we go by pending. Well, we really don't know what they're selling for yet. <laughs> comps, comps haven't changed at all. We're doing comps like we always have. But now what we're doing is we're looking at sales. They represent, here's what the past look like. What's going on with the listings and pendings in the neighborhood? That's the only thing that matters. Like I had an agent who texted me this morning. He said, a model match sold at 540. And I think I'm going 500. And it, it was almost like he was just pulling something out of his head. I'm like, well, what do the pendings suggest? Like what's getting into the contract? What, what's going on with the listings? And, you know, so I think you have to juggle all of those things right now. Um, you know, and it's a, it's a hard thing. You don't want to price too low because buyers are less prone to offer above the list price and you leave money on the table for your clients. And, and it's also like that dynamic of properties need to spend longer on the market. So it's not freak out time after a week, you know? And so it's this, it's a learning experience. It'll get easier as we have more sales. When the market starts to change and you don't have the sales yet, it, it's just, there's like this pregnant time. Eventually the baby will come out. We'll see the market more clearly. So, great. So speaking of the pendings, right now my title rep tells me that about 30% of deals that are go, go, going pending are falling out. How do, we, how do we account for that in looking at the pending trend? And at what point does that catch up in the pending process? It's, it, it's hard, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, I, yeah, I, I mean, when does something count as a pending? I, I don't know what the MLS rules are for that. Um, but um, I would say right now, at least it's not a massive chunk of the market. Um, but I would say it's going to grow. Um, I don't know technically how they account for that when something falls out, is it still counted? Um, I don't know. I'm more, yeah, so I don't want to beat the dead horse on that. Because um, I don't know. So any other questions? And Johnny, can I say something on that? Yeah, man. Uh, not a question for you, Ryan, though. Um, so, but what I want everyone in here to look at is that with all the numbers that Ryan gave us, what you see is there's still plenty of sales going on. Yeah. Okay. And there's going to be a lot of people, you know, we've talked about this all the time. There's going to be a lot of people that get out of the business, which is a lot of the people that wait for business to come to them. Okay. So whatever you're doing right now for lead generation and getting business, think about doubling, okay? Because there's still plenty of stuff there that everyone can get as long as you're working for it. No matter what market it is, workers get rewarded. Yeah. And, and I'd say too, I mean, 
use your skills and your creativity and like your gifts in life to find people to work with. Like if you love running, like incorporate that in your business somehow. Or if you're being frugal in your own life, like step forward and say, Here, here's how I'm cutting expenses. Like, guess what? Buyers are gonna need to do cut expenses in an inflationary environment to for the market. And so if you're an expert in that, you're doing well, like share your strengths with people and don't don't be afraid to be vulnerable like that. You know, I mean I just think that buyers need help in various ways. Think about what are they struggling with, you know, and you know, food prices and gas. And you know, I would love to freaking see more real estate agents and loan officers giving away gas cards and like and helping people like why the heck are we not seeing that? Because everyone else is like, I'm not spending any money. But Think about your marketing dollars and what can give you, um, you know, publicity, but what can give you to, to, to really help people, you know? I'm like, why didn't people like rise up? Look, I, my garage is full of formula. No, that would have been a really bad idea. <laughs> you would have been canceled in a minute. So don't do that. Do it with gas stuff. Yeah, all right. No, not not gas, in gas, gas cars, not yeah. gas. Your, home, your home inspector will have a major issue. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Five grams of gallon of gas. All right. Any more questions for Ryan? We got time for one more. We got one more question. No. All right. Well, with that, no. Give Ryan a big round of applause. I will be getting those slides out to you. They're going to be on the Branco page. They're going to be on the Made for More Agents page, so you can get access to those. We'll see you tonight at the Made for More Mixer. Take care, all. Bye. Thanks.